Amanil Kumar, let me first thank my subscribers and viewers for their valuable suggestions and watching my videos. On the request, here is a video to complete some concepts of polynomial division. In this series, I'll take three videos to cover the whole unit on polynomial divisions, which will include factor theorem, remainder theorem, and applications. Let's begin with polynomial division. To start with, we'll start from what we really know, and that is how to divide numbers. Let us say I have to divide 11 by 5. And that's the long division which we can perform. 5 goes 2 times. We write 10 underneath. Take away 10 from 11, and what we get is the remainder 1. And we can always write a statement saying, that 11 divided by 5 is indeed equal to 5 times, I mean, 11 divided by 5 is the quotient 2 plus 1 over 5, the remainder, right? But more familiar is when we multiply all of them by 5, what do we get? We get 11 equals to 5 times 2 plus 1, that is, 11 is equals to divisor times quotient plus remainder. So the terms which I used were, let me write down the terms which are most of the time applied here. The terms are, we call this as a divisor and this we'll call the number since we are working with polynomials. Let me call this as the polynomial which we are going to use in coming examples to divide by divisor, what we get is a quotient. And, uh, and here at the end, we get the remainder. Polynomial or the, the, or the function or the number which is being divided is also called dividend. So that's an alternate name which we can use. Rather, that's the name which we should be using most of the time. Uh, okay. So these are the technical words which we are going to use. And from this simple example, we could write relation between them, right? So, so we could write like here we say a polynomial divided by the divisor divisor is equal to quotient plus remainder divided by divisor. In functions, we will give them some names, so we can always write this as the polynomial p of x. Let's say it's a function of x divided by the divisor d of x is equal to the quotient q of x plus a remainder r of x times or divided by uh, the divisor d of x, right? Alternate way of writing this is in the form which is without fractions. So we just multiply by the divisor. So we can say polynomial p of x is equal to the quotient q of x times divisor plus the remainder, right? So the statements which we have got here in kind of a relation between divisor, dividend, quotient, and the remainder, these statements are referred to as division state. state. Right. Remember, uh, we are writing polynomial here, but the polynomial being divided is also called dividend. I'm using P of X since there will be two D's and it creates confusion. Right. So, so the dividend is a word which we are going to use. Now, in the next example, we will see how to divide 
the polynomials, which is the major topic. We'll begin with a very simple case. Let us say a quadratic function will divide by a linear function. Okay, so let's say x minus 5. So this is the exercise which we'll do on the next page. Okay, but I hope here you have learned how divisor, dividend, quotient, and remainder are related. And we'll have a closer look at this in coming videos. So let's move on. So now we will see how to divide a polynomial. Uh, we'll take a very simple example. So we are taking a quadratic function, x squared minus 7x plus 8. And we are dividing by a linear factor. I should not say factor. Uh, by a linear function, x minus 5. Now the steps involved are, we have two terms here, x and minus 5, so we'll involve two terms. We have to take care of the first term first. So x squared divided by x is x, so we'll multiply x minus 5 by x. So that comes in the quotient. So when you multiply x with x minus 5, what do you get? Like distributive property, basically what we're doing here is, we'll now multiply x by x minus 5, is it okay? And whatever comes, well, we are going to place here. So x times x is x squared minus 5x. Is that okay? So you don't have to write anything on the side. I just wrote as it may be uh, simpler to understand. Now the next step, of course, is to subtract, right? So let's subtract here. Minus 7 minus of minus 5 will give us minus 2x and then bring down the next term, which is plus 8. This is normally done in long division, right? You start with a number and keep on bringing down the other numbers. So same process is being followed. Now to take care of minus 2x, what is the maximum by which I can multiply x to get minus 2x? It is minus 2, right? So minus 2 comes in the quotient. When you multiply, you get minus 2x minus times minus 5 becomes plus 10 and again we'll subtract to get the remainder this time remainder is minus 2 is that okay so that becomes the remainder so if you get a remainder that means x minus 5 is not a factor okay now let's write division statement from whatever we have done so let me write division statement now You have to get used to uh, these words. Division statement will be that the polynomial x squared minus 7x plus 8 is equal to product of quotient and divisor, which is x minus 5 times x minus 2, plus the remainder, which is minus 2 in our case. So that becomes the division statement. Remember, we wrote this as polynomial is equals to divisor times quotient plus remainder perfect the remainder is minus 2 so that takes its place now as a practice question you can try dividing this polynomial so what I will do here is make a small change we got a remainder of minus 2 that clearly indicates that if my polynomial was plus 10 then I would have got remainder of 0, right? So try dividing this by x minus 5, correct? So, so when you do that, you will notice that the remainder is 0, right? Since I took all those numbers similar to what we had, so we'll have x minus 2, and you can see or check. Uh, you can check, rather you should check that x squared minus 7x plus 10 is indeed equal to x minus 5 times x minus 2, right? Plus remainder 0, so I don't have to write. When you get remainder 0, it means that x minus 5 is a factor, right? So this is a very important conclusion. It implies that x minus 5 is a factor. So, so whenever you get remainder equals to 0, that means the divisor is a factor, right? Remainder equals to 0. 
So that is very important to understand and that helps us to factor polynomials. One thing which you will also notice here is that 5 is a factor of 10. 5 is not a factor of 8 and therefore we did get some remainder, right? So I hope you have learned here that long division is a straightforward process by which we can divide polynomials. And we have also learned how to write division statement after doing the division. If the remainder is 0, then the divisor is a factor. Perfect. So let me take another example. Here. Now, let's take up an example where we are going to divide a cubic function with a linear function, right? So let us say that the cubic function is 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 3x plus 4. And let's divide by x minus 2, right? So technically, we call the term here as dividend, and that's the divisor. Whatever we get on top is the quotient. Remaining is remainder, right? So first thing is, you have to take care of the first term. So you need to multiply by 2x squared. So if I multiply by 2x squared, I get 2x cubed. 2 times 2 is 4, so we get minus 4x squared, correct? Now we'll take away, bring down the next term. So when you take away, you get x squared here, bring down the next term, which is minus 3x. Now we have to multiply by x, so we write plus x, x squared minus 2x. And when you take away, you get minus, uh, you get minus x and you bring down 4, so plus 4. Now, it goes minus 1 time, you can say minus 1, and you get minus x plus 2. The remainder is 2 for you. Correct? So, so when you divide by a cubic function, degree 3 and a linear. So when the divisor is a linear, you expect quotient to be of order 2, right? So that is what we observe always. The degree of the quotient is going to be degree of the polynomial minus the degree of the divisor. Is it okay? So, so that is how it is. Now here we will learn one more technique and that is the remainder which we got to could also be checked by finding the value of this polynomial at x equals to 2. So, so what we have here is a polynomial p of x is 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 3x plus 4. So let's plug in 2 in that function. So if I substitute x with 2, what do I get? I get 2 times 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 4, right? 2 cube is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, minus 4 times 3 is 12, and that is minus 6, and this is plus 4. Now, 16 minus 12 is 4, right? Plus 4. 16 minus 12 is plus 4, and plus 4 minus 6 is minus 2, and minus 2 plus 4 is 2. So what you see is that the remainder is same as the value of the function. Correct? So that brings us to remainder theorem. Remainder theorem basically says that if we have a polynomial p of x and if it is divided by a term like x minus a, in that case, p of a, as we substitute it, which is the value 2, right, a will be the remainder, will be the remainder. So whatever is the remainder is actually the value of the function at a. Is that okay? So that's the remainder theorem. Now, this time we divided by the factor 
I mean, it is not a factor, but a linear function with a coefficient being 1. But if a polynomial is divided by, let us say, ax plus b, right? In that case, the remainder you can find as equal to value of the function uh, b over a. So that will be the remainder. Now, why do you get b over a? Let's understand that also. So basically, what we are doing is p of x is being divided by, if I take a common, right? a common, then I get x plus b over a. Do you see that? So this is that b over a. However, the quotient, we are not checking the quotient. In the two division, this quotient you need to divide by a. So remember that part. So what we learned here is that it is not necessary that if this number is a factor of the constant part, then we get remainder 0. But it is most likely that the remainder could be 0. Is that okay? So that's what we learned here. Another thing which we learned here is that the remainder could be found easily even without doing long division by substituting the value in the polynomial. So the value or the value of the polynomial at A is the remainder, right? So we'll take up another example here, which is critical. In these examples, all the terms of a polynomial were there. We'll take up some example, rather only one, which is last for this video, where there will be some missing terms, okay? Uh, so now we'll try to divide x cubed minus 1, we'll divide this by x minus 1. And let us see how to do this division. Now in this particular case, you will observe that I have few missing terms. Right? Normally, you write a polynomial like ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, right? So what you notice here is that you do have the first term with leading coefficient 1 and the last term, the constant, but the two terms here are missing. These two terms are missing. When we are dividing by x minus a, let me write down x minus a as a divisor, then uh, it becomes difficult because we have to take two terms, the second term is missing. So what we do here is, in such cases, we use a placeholder. And I'll just show you how. So we have x cubed, so we'll write down x cubed here. However, we do not have any term with x squared, so I'll make b a 0, so I'll write plus 0x squared. So that becomes a placeholder. It's still, still 0, the same function. We don't have c, so we'll write 0x. We do have a constant minus 1, so we'll write that. So we have two placeholders here just to fill in the gaps, and uh, that helps us to continue with long division. Otherwise, there could be some difficulty. Now, the process is same. x minus 1, we have to take care of x cubed first, so I need to multiply by x squared. So you get x cubed minus x squared. When you take away, you get x squared plus 0x. I'm bringing down. Now we can do plus x. You get x squared minus x. When you take away, you get plus x, bring down minus 1, and that goes one time, right? Plus 1. So you get x minus 1, and the remainder is 0. Correct? So as expected, x minus 1 is a factor. So we can now write x cubed minus 1 as equal to x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. Do you see? So that becomes the, the division statement for the given example. So we refer to this as division statement. Since the remainder is 0, we know x minus 1 is a factor. Right? Remainder is 0. And that brings us to the factor theorem. And this is called factor theorem. So we'll elaborate on this later, but it gives you a good idea. The factor theorem states that when you're dividing by x minus a, 
and if p of a is 0, so what we have done here is uh, we divide by x minus a, we got 0 as the remainder, therefore x minus a is a factor, perfect, that is per factors, that means remainder is 0. You also learn that the remainder is actually value of the function, so what we also find here is that p of 1 is what? If I substitute p of 1 in this function, let's say that is what we are calling this polynomial as, then we get 1 cube minus 1 which is 0. Since the remainder is 0, x minus 1 is a factor. You get an idea? So that is how we are trying to link it. Now, as an exercise, what you can do is you can find a formula for uh, x cube minus a cube when you divide this by x minus a, right? So let this be a question for you to do. You already know a cube minus b cube formula. That can be derived in this fashion. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope this set of videos helped you to introduce polynomial divisions with some basic concepts. Go through this once again and then I've provided you with a couple of links which will help you to understand this unit on polynomial division better. We'll take up another set. We'll talk about remainder and factor theorem in details. Thank you and all the best.